Hello everyone, Gaff the Master974 here again today, and I'm doing a follow up Valve Source Code tutorial today. I'm actually going to follow on from the Sphere of Sprites tutorial, which basically covers how you can create a decorative entity uh, which has a shell of sprites that are points on a sphere thanks to a spherical polar coordinate conversion. So that is a prerequisite for following this guide today. Um, check that out if you want to understand how to get that to work. But in that case, it is just the sprites. In this case, we're going to expand on that and cover how to draw beams between each of the points that make up that sphere. So without further ado, let's get started. Near the top of the file with our hashtag include files, we're going to hashtag include beam underscore shared dot h. As we're going to be using the cbeam class, we need to include beamshared.h to be able to gain access to that class. And then in the precache function, we're going to add precache model. And this is going to be the material that the beams are going to use. So in my case, it's sprites forward slash laserbeam.vmt. And then we're going to go to the setup points function. And during my experimentation of this, the beams don't parent to the Funk Sphere entity as they're supposed to. So the best workaround I came up with was to actually create a dummy sprite to parent all of the laser beams to. So to create a dummy sprite, we're going to do C sprite and you call it whatever you want to, but I'm calling it um, asterisk invisible origin. And this is going to be equal to C sprite colon colon sprite create. Now I'm going to use the same parameters as I've used for sprites in the previous tutorial, which is that they use the material sprites forward slash glow 01.vmt and that we don't want them to animate. But the key thing here is that the position is our zero point position vector, which is basically where the funk sphere entity is in the hammer map. And then immediately afterwards do invisible origin arrow turn off to hide the sprites. That way you don't see it when the entity is spawned in the map in game. Then after the code for the setup of the sprites that make up the sphere, I'm going to create a constant integer called beam segments, and this is going to be equal to four. So the code that I'm going to go through is going to be broken into four beam segments. So zero is going to cover horizontal beams, one is going to cover vertical beams, but because of the way the code works, it's not going to handle beam drawing at the top and the bottom. So two and three are going to be for the top and bottom beam drawing sections respectively. So then we're going to create a 3D matrix of beams by doing C beam, asterisk, P beams, and then in square brackets, beam segments, number of vertical angles, and number of horizontal angles. This may create way more beams than we actually need, but in a case like this, it's better to have more beams than less beams. And then we're going to go into another nested for loop. This time we're going to create three for loops. The first one using int k equals zero, k less than beam segments, and k plus plus. And then similar to the positioning of the sprites, we're going to use i equals zero, i less than number of vertical angles, i plus plus, and j equals zero, j less than number of horizontal angles, j plus plus. And then reuse previous codes such as float v angle to use equals i asterisk vert angle. And then int f equals the integer value of v ang to use. And then if f is exactly equal to zero, or if f divided by 180 leaves a remainder of zero, then break. After this, we're going to do p beams of kij, which is beam segments, vertical angles, and then horizontal angles. And that's going to be set to c beam, colon, colon, beam create with our sprites forward slash laserbeam.vmc material as pre-cached earlier, and a width, in my case, this is going to be 0.5. And now we're gonna go into something that I've not covered on the channel before, which I'm going to call a switch case system. So a switch case system is a more efficient way of doing if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if. 
And so to create a switch, you use the keyword switch. And what is it going to be covering? Well, it's our parameter in the for loop K, which is going to be iterating over our beam segments, you know, so horizontal angles, vertical angles, the top and the bottom of the sphere. And so we're going to start with the first case, which is case zero, which is going to handle horizontal beam drawing. And so I'm going to say if J is less than the number of horizontal angles minus one, then P beams of zero I J arrow int in it, which means it's going to use entities to draw a beam from one entity to another. And we're going to use P sprite I J and P sprite I J plus one. But taking into account that we're not going to be able to create a full circle by doing this, we're going to add else p beams 0 ij arrow int init of p sprite ij and p sprite i0. And for a switch case system, at the end of each case, you have to use the keyword break to break out of the case. Otherwise, it's just going to go into the next case and execute all of that code when you don't want it to. Next up is case one, which is the vertical angles. And in this case, we're going to say if I is less than the number of vertical angles minus one, then we're going to do P beams one I J arrow ints in it P sprites I J and P sprites I plus one and J and then break. The reasoning for this is for the horizontal angles, we have to worry about going around in a complete circle. And so the else statement makes it so we can go back to the starting position. But for the vertical angles, we don't have to worry about that. Essentially, we can go from the top of the sphere to the bottom of the sphere and go up by one without worrying about not being able to get to the end. If you get what I'm saying, I go over this argument in the sphere of sprites original tutorial about the difference between going around a full circle 360 degrees and then only going to 180 degrees in the vertical angle sense because it's just a way of constructing a sphere. So next up is case two, which is going to cover the top of the sphere. And the way I'm gonna work this is by simply doing P beams two I J arrow int in it, P sprites zero zero and P sprites one J, and then use the keyword break after this. So what this is doing is going from the top of the sphere, which is defined at P sprites zero zero, and then goes down a shell to P sprites one in the vertical angle case, but then go around J, which covers all of the horizontal angles. And then last but not least, we're gonna do case three, and similar to case two, what we're gonna do in case three is P beams three IJ arrow ends in it, and this time I'm going to work slightly backwards. I'm going to do P sprites number of vertical angles and zero, and then P sprites of the number of vertical angles minus one and J, and then use the keyword break afterwards. So in this case, it's actually going to draw a beam from the bottom of the sphere. They've defined P sprites number of vertical angles zero, and then go to the shell above at number of vertical angles minus one, and then go around the number of horizontal angles J. So if you care about the direction in which the beams are going to be drawing, then you might want to change this around. But for a switch case system, you can also have a default case in case you say set K to be four and there's no case four because it's outside of the bounds of the system that we've constructed. And so I'm going to say default and then just break. So in case we have our parameter k have a value that's illegal let's say then we're just going to do nothing now you can have an error message here if you want to but in our case we're just going to exit out the function immediately and so after that we can do p beams k i j arrow set brightness 255 p beams k i j arrow set color to whatever you want. In my case, it's going to be white. So 255, 255, 255. And then P beams, KIJ, arrow, set parent, invisible origin, the dummy sprite that we created earlier. 
Now, if you try and build this immediately, you may have a crash like I do, where you have too many entities being created. So you may have to decrease the number of horizontal angles and the number of vertical angles used. In my case, it would be beneficial to set these numbers uh, to a multiple of 180. That way you can have a point at the top of the sphere, a point at the bottom of the sphere and beams or draw as they should. And the result should look something like what I'm going to show on screen right now, which is a sphere and there's beams that are drawn between each and every point on that sphere. And that is a tutorial, so I hope you found this helpful and useful. This is a follow up on my terms because I figured out how to get this to work in my own time. And I've been sitting on this idea for about two months now without actually doing the video, so I'm doing it now. So yeah, if there's any tutorial ideas you have for me and you want me to look into, I can. I'm not an expert, so don't expect too many more tutorials unless I figure out how to do stuff on my own terms. But yeah, hope you enjoy and take care out there, peace out and see you for the next video.